Hi guys, welcome back to Midnight Reading. My name is Aluchi and guys, it's literally fall. Like, I feel like I blinked and 2021 is literally over. That is so crazy. But guys, it's fall, autumn, whatever you like to call it. And I literally, I think this is one of my favorite seasons because I just feel like fall is literally its own aesthetic. Like, it's the perfect time for new beginnings, falling in love. And that is why I have compiled a list of my underrated four book recommendations that I hope you guys love as much as I did. So without further ado, let's get into the recommendations. Now, our first book recommendation is Falling Fast by Sophie McKenzie. I absolutely love this book. I read it when I was 14 and I kind of forgot like the book title and the author. And so like three years ago, I Googled the synopsis trying to find the book and lo and behold, the power of the internet, I found it. Falling Fast by Sophie McKenzie is a sweet contemporary romance that involves Flynn and River, River being our female protagonist and Flynn being her eventual male love interest. Flynn and River meet when they're doing auditions for the school production of Romeo and Juliet. So initially, um, River didn't want to do these aud auditions, but she was kind of like um, egged on by her friends to do it. And Flynn is a talented um, thespian already, so obviously he's going to want to audition for it. So they meet each other, and initially, this book is kind of like an enemies to lovers novel, because initially, Flynn did not like River, and River didn't really like Flynn. But I think their differences, in a way, sort of bring them together by the end of the novel. It's not, it's sort of a slow burner a little bit, but the way they fall for each other and the way Flynn, um, cause he kind of has this brooding thing going on, kind of like, I kind of hate the world a little bit, but you. So it kind of has that trope going on. And when they fall in love, it's just so sweet and so cute. And what I especially love about this novel is just how realistic it is. Because Flynn and River felt like actual teenagers that are dealing with actual things. Like Flynn, River wasn't always likable. She was, sometimes you'd be like, this girl, like you're so shallow. Or like, why would you think like that? So it was very, very realistic with the way they thought. And I just, and I also love the way Sophie McKenzie thought of, sort of put in like real life issues for these, for this couple to deal with because um it's brought to uh, like the attention of the readers that um Flynn isn't really he doesn't come from a well-off family like his family is actually kind of poor his family is poor like kind of dirt poor while River comes from a well-off family and you kind of like, see the like, dynam dynamic of these two social classes being explored it's, it's not really like Romeo and Juliet, the actual story. But you see these um, social classes, social standings being explored. And it does bring a lot of problems in their, in their relationship. Obviously, Flynn doesn't have a, a lot of money. River does. But the way um, this dynamic plays out is so interesting. And we'll just... How, River is such a cute... Um, excuse me, Flynn is such a cute book boyfriend that he will leave you literally crushing on him. Uh, most of the books on this list are standalones. This is actually the only book on this list that's kind of a series. I didn't know it was a series when I first read it. And it's, it's it does well as a standalone novel. Like you actually don't have to read the, the second book in the series because this the first novel kind of ties everything up. But this is such a cute novel and I definitely recommend it to you guys. The next book is Forbidden by Tabitha Suzuma. And I'm literally not lying when I tell you guys I've literally read this book about four times. It has to be one of my favorite books of all time because this book deals with a taboo subject that not a lot of writers or readers tend to want to explore. And this book deals with an incestuous relationship between a brother and a sister. I know what you guys are thinking. Ew, gross. Why would I want to read a novel about a brother falling in love with his sister or a sister falling in love with his brother? But the beauty of and the skill of being such a good writer is that you're able to design these characters in such a way that your reader can sympathize sympathize with them regardless of their race, their gender, their background, or their opinions and views. And I feel like Tabitha Suzuma captures this essence of being such a skilled writer because literally by the end of the novel, you're going to be rooting for this brother and sister couple. This novel follows the story of 17-year-old Lachin and 16-year-old Maya who, yeah, they have an age difference, like just of one year. So they felt more like friends than siblings because I mean, 16 and 17 isn't too much of a big age difference. Like I have a one year age difference with my sister and we are siblings, but sometimes it feels like we're more friends than siblings because it's like, I mean, I'm your older sister, but 
it's just one year age difference. So it's not that big, that big of a deal. So 17 year old Locke and a 16 year old Maya, um, they come from a one parent um, home. Their mother is an alcoholic, a wayward alcoholic who is hardly at home, hardly pays the bills, and they have three other younger siblings. So Lachan is basically the man of the house and Maya is basically the woman of the house. She takes care of the siblings and Lachan tries his best to get money in order to make sure that food is on the table. Before they even fall in love, Lachan and Maya already have this dynamic of man of the house, woman of the house, husband, wife. So they already have this dynamic that brings them closer than the average siblings because they really have to step up and be the parents of the household. To make it even worse for these siblings, Lockin, the 17 year old, has crippling anxiety. Like literally, you know when you have anxiety, I feel like everyone goes through anxiety, I have anxiety sometimes. But you know when you have crippling anxiety, that's just a whole new different level. Like Lockin is extremely smart, he loves literature, he loves books, but he finds it so difficult talking to anyone other than Maya or even his siblings, even his siblings sometimes he can struggle, but Maya is the only one he really confides in. So Lockin has crippling anxiety and his body deals with this anxiety by him biting his bottom lip. I think somewhere in the novel, he bites his bottom lip so hard that it literally draws blood. Like it starts bleeding. His lips are always chapped because he's always chewing on them. And Maya is this beautiful 16 year old that's charismatic, gets along with everyone, doesn't have any anxiety at all. And I mean, the difference in their characters in a way kind of, the polar opposites of the character, characters kind of brings them closer because they balance each other out. So the stress of Lockin and Maya's personal lives and their deep understanding of each other sort of brings them closer together and then they eventually fall in love. Guys, this novel, Forbidden by Tabitha Tuzuma, gets me so hyped up because it's literally stunning. The writing is beautiful. It is a taboo subject, obviously, incest, but it's so well written, guys. You will fall in love with Lockin, you'll fall in love with Maya, and you'll just be like, oh my god, I wish they weren't siblings because they, they, they fit each other so well. This is so wrong, but it's so right. And yeah, the ending is shocking, guys. The ending will leave you shocked. I'm not gonna destroy it this is a spoiler free account okay honey spoiler free account so you guys should definitely check out forbidden by tabitha suzuma it will stay with you forever because that book has literally stayed with me forever i think about it like every single year i think every single month i think about forbidden by tabitha Tab 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 suzuma because it's just that good so you guys should definitely give this novel um definitely put this novel on your tbr list conversations with friends by sally rooney came into my life when when I was being challenged, my love for reading was being challenged in a way it has never been challenged before. As many of you know, Sally Rooney is quite famous for her novel, Normal People. Um, this is actually my first <laughs> Sally Rooney novel that I read, Conversation with Friends, recommended to me by my sister. Shout out, Chi Chi. Shout out to Chi Chi, my sister. So, um, as some of you know, if, so, if you guys know Sally Rooney, she's quite a realist and her writing reflects that. And the scenario she puts in her characters reflect, reflects that. And I mean, I love realistic um, stories, obviously, but I also tend to be more on the idealistic, um, surreal, surrealism side of literature. So this was this was quite a good book. Um, I didn't love it, but I liked it a lot. And above all, I found it extremely interesting. I had never read. I have never read anything like this before. So conversation with friends um, follows the story of Francis. Bobby, Nick, and Melissa. Those are our four main characters. Frances is the main main character. She's um that's where the POV is coming from, Francis. And Francis and Bobby are best friends and they used to have an intimate relationship. They used to be like a couple. So Francis and Bobby, best friends, um, used to be in a relationship, not in a relationship right now, just best friends. And they end up meeting Melissa, this cool hip older woman who is a photographer and just you know just in love with life and she has a husband as an actor called nick he's like a budding actor he's quite famous in like dublin where this book is set um in the novel but he's a good looking guy handsome all the ladies like stare at him he looks like a movie star he is a movie star nick so um francis melissa bobby nick they all grow close and they become friends they they, they start going on these, um, they start having these dinners together, start getting to know each other. And Francis starts to catch feelings for Nick, Melissa's husband. And so they, they begin an intimate relationship and they begin an affair. 
So I find this such an interesting novel. Even thinking about it right now, I'm just remembering like how I felt when I was reading it. And guys, it was it was spicy. I mean, the sex scenes are sexy between um Francis and Nick. This novel gave me major fall vibes and I think it will give you fall vibes too. So you guys should definitely check out Conversations with Friends by Sally Rooney. Under the Udala Trees by Chinlo Oparanta, I think it's like, I'm Nigerian and I don't read a lot of Nigerian novels, but I think this is like the third Nigerian novel I've read. And I read this back in 2017. Please don't mind this, guys. I borrowed this novel to a lot of people, so they've kind of messed it up. But Under the Udala Trees, I read it back in 2017. And guys, when I tell you I was blown away, this novel is a Nigerian LGBTQ novel. Have you ever heard of that? This is a Nigerian LGBTQ novel. Under the Udala Trees follows the story of Ijoma, who is exploring her sexuality at a young age. Um, in the beginning, she comes from a wealthy family, and that's until her father dies. And when her father dies, that leaves like a sort of hole in her heart. I know when you lose a parent, it almost feels like you've lost both parents. And that's how it feels with Ijoma. It's almost like she's lost both her parents. Um, so when her father dies, they become, they go from upper class to almost poor. And um, her mother goes through a lot of trials and the civil war breaks out in Nigeria, which is even more depressing and more, um, it presents more hardships for Ajama and her family. So Ajama's mom sends her to live with this couple. I don't want to spoil the whole book for you guys, but Ajama's mom sends her away to live with this couple and she's like, it's only going to be for a little while, but it ends up being for two years. So while this is all happening, um, Ajama has explored her relationship with her friend Amina, who's also a girl. Um, she, she feels something for Amina, but she doesn't know what it is. But I think she, she sort of knows in the back of her head that she's in love with Amina. In Nigeria, up till today, unfortunately, being gay isn't something that's accepted in the country. I think if you have found out to be gay, you have to be jailed for 14 years, I think. So imagine this happening back in the 1960s and imagine it happening today. It's still the same consequences. Um, being gay in Nigeria is a big taboo. And I and Ijama living with even being a lesbian in Nigeria is even a bigger taboo and even brings up bigger hardships. So she gets older, she marries a man who she eventually divorces because she finds out that, look, I don't feel anything for this man because I don't love men. It disgusts me sleeping with him. So it's just an exploration of her sexuality and her coming in terms of her sexuality as she gets older. It's a really sad novel, but it's quite beautiful. And in my opinion, I think it's almost perfect. Chinelo of Paranta did a very good job and I wish more people knew about Under the Udala Trees because it is beautiful it is stunning it is perfect and yeah just i want you guys to get a good look at the novel it is such a beautiful novel guys and i think you guys should definitely check it out our next underrated fall book recommendation is actually by a well-known author the author of Ra the raven boy series and one of my favorite series of all times the wolves of mercy falls and that is maggie stifata maggie stifata wrote this book the scorpio races and i absolutely love it i don't know why it's not talked about as often as her other books because this standalone novel is mwah, chef's kiss chef's delight it literally has stayed with me forever and i think it's something i i will constantly it's a book that will probably show up in most of my lists because it's just that good this book gives me major fall vibes because i mean it just has this kind of dark rainy leaves falling vibe to it but enough about the ambiance of the novel let me get right into what it's actually about so this novel follows the story of sean and puck sean being our male protagonist and puck being our female protagonist it's told in two point of views, so you get into the head of puck and sean which is awesome and so basically this novel is set on an island where every single november november fall where every single november a races is held between the kapa ushka and the Kapa Ushka are these mythical horse-like creatures. Okay, so these races between the Kapa Ushka, these ho uh, mythical horse-like creatures, basically the first day of every November, every single male from each family races to the death in order to find out the winner of these races. And Sean is like the four-year champion. He's won literally every single race, but he's bound to this wealthy family on this island. And he's kind of like, I wouldn't say a slave, but it's kind of an indentured servitude thing happening between um, Sean and this wealthy family. And he's trying to just buy up time, gather up wealth so he can eventually just um, live that independent lifestyle he's always 
craved and always wanted to be. And on the other hand, Sean, our male female protagonist, um, she comes from this family that's not so wealthy. She's been living on this island. She is the first female to compete in the races. Go her! So this um, novel deals with a lot of like feminism, um, uh, just basically um, proving people wrong regardless of who you are, your background, and it's just I think an amazing novel for four. It really captures that ambiance of four, which I really love. Um, I mean, obviously, Sean and Puck, they become each other's love interests later on in the novel, which is also great. Um, let me actually read a quote from the novel that I really like. I say I will not be your weakness, Sean Kendrick. Now he looks at me. He says very softly, it's late for that, Puck. <laughs> So I loved everything about this novel, the feminism, the sea, the horses, the ambiance, the characters. Maggie Stiefvater has such a, does such a good job of just capturing the essence of a novel, the essence of the characters in the novel and the essence of the setting, just the essence of the story. I think she's a very talented author. And I mean, she's a YA author, but I feel like she's extremely talented when it comes to her writing. I mean, she's one of my favorites. I'm not biased, but I think she's amazing. And I think this Scorpio Races is an underrated fall romance novel. And I think you guys are definitely going to enjoy just as much as I did. So that's something you should definitely put on your TBR list, The Scorpio Races by Maggie Stiefvater. My next novel is by a very well-known um, children's author, um, Eva Ibotsen. Um, This isn't a children's novel, though, the book I'm about to mention, but she's quite well-known for writing books for children or books for young adults, middle school grade. But the next novel I'm going to recommend is The Secret Countess by Eva Ibotsen. And I remember reading this at 13 and absolutely just loving it. I recently read it. And I loved it just the same. So this novel basically... Um, it captures the story of a countess called Anna, who during the Russian Revolution, World War I, she comes from a very wealthy family. Obviously, she's a countess, but suddenly um, the World War I, World War I threatens um, her and her family stay in Russia. So basically, her family gives the maid these jewels and expensive things to go to England and wait for them. And the maid is like, sure, I have all these expensive things. I'm going to obviously wait for you guys and not like run off. But anyways, um, Anna and her fam Russian family, they move to England and they're looking for this maid. They're looking for this maid. And obviously she's nowhere to be found because she's probably sold and their belongings and ran away. So Anna is like, um, her family becomes poor because they have no money in England. And Anna volunteers to work as a housemaid in order to earn enough money for the upkeep of her family. So she goes to work in this mansion, this home owned by Rupert, um, a a duke i believe but rupert becomes attracted to be her because of her charm her personality and obviously because she's distinguished but she's acting like she isn't because she's a nursemaid but because she but because she comes from a distinguished household he kind of has she, he kind of feels that flair that she's different from the other maids and so they end up falling in love but the only problem is that rupert is supposed to marry this other woman and of a very high-ranking family and so his um, betrothal to this other woman, his potential betrothal to this other woman, and then his love for Anna just creates this love triangle between these two women and him that just kind of plays out. You kind of see that how it plays out in the novel and who he eventually chooses to be with. Um, it's, it's a sad novel, but it's also mixed with a lot of comedy. It's quite funny. Um, it does suffer from like slow pacing in the middle of the novel, but then it picks up towards the ending. So in the middle is a bit of a slow pacing thing going on but it's still a really good novel and i just loved it i mean if you're a fan of um dukes duchesses countesses counts then this novel is definitely for you like it captures that whole essence and it also captures that essence of fall you can just i don't know the thing about fall is that when you read a novel before you even find out it's actually set in fall you kind of just have that feel because of the ambiance and this novel definitely captures the ambiance it deals with world war one deals with lost love lost treasures um you guys are definitely going to love it as much as i did so if you're into that sort of stuff go ahead and put it on your reading list because Eva Ibotsen does a very good job. The next novel is a very lesser known novel and it's Kisses for Lula by Samantha McIntosh. And this novel follows Lula Bear, Bird, Lula Bird, who is 15 years old and is about to turn 16, year old, 16 years old on her 16th birthday. Um, but the thing about Lula is that she's never been kissed. And hence the title, Kisses for Lula, where are her kisses? Lula has never been kissed. 
and um i mean anytime she bats her eyelids at any boy they literally run away from her because rumor has it that lula has been jinxed like she's cursed so no guy is interested in her because of that but she has this crush that she's been dying to get with before her 16th birthday because she really likes him and she hopes he likes her too but at the same time something is really weird happening with her dad her dad literally sneaks out of the house at night with a lady's handbag and there's just so much things going on in this novel that lula has to solve before her 16th birthday but it's really interesting and it's such a nice sweet contemporary that i think um you guys will definitely fall in love with lula bird she's an extremely likable character and her adventure relationship with the guy is just something that's nice to look forward to it's just a really sweet book this book is really funny sweet and lula comes off as like scatterbrained silly goofy but somebody with a good heart and i feel like this is definitely a novel that i will definitely recommend for you guys kisses for lula by samantha mcintosh so with that being said this brings me to the end of this video underrated romance four book recommendations that i hope that you guys love just as much as i did um i know there's a lot of novels i mean probably all the novels you i mentioned you guys probably have not heard about it or it's not being talked about on book talk or booktube because they are very lesser known novels but that doesn't make them not as great as other novels that are mainstream you guys should definitely check it out because i love these novels um thank you guys so much for watching this video if you want to follow me on my socials it will be right in the description box below if you guys like this video don't be afraid or hesitate to give it a like um and if you guys want to see more content like this or more of this phase or more of my um what i have to give just go ahead and subscribe and let's be friends so thank you guys so much for watching this video and i will see you guys again in my next video bye